everyone, welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I am your hostess, Marla Martinson, and since it's the month of February, we are talking all things love, and I have Lilith Dorsey here. She's the author of this amazing book called Love Magic. Love Magic, over 250 spells and potions for getting it, keeping it, and making it last. And she hails from many magical traditions, including Celtic, Afro-Caribbean, Native American spirituality. Um, she is also a voodoo priestess. And uh, Lilith has been doing successful magic since 1991, and she believes that a good ritual should be fun and innovative. And I totally agree. Welcome, Lilith! <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for having me here. This is wonderful. Yay. It's so much fun. I just, as a matchmaker, oh, I love this book. It is so cute, you guys. I know. It's so cute. It's such a cute little size. I love it's that. It's a great size, and it's got all these great little little um, uh, depictions here, you know, little drawings and, and spells and it's just so much fun. I mean, this is something you can refer to forever. So we're going to get into this. Um, I wanted to ask about, first of all, what is voodoo? Because you're a voodoo priestess, and I'm not <laughs> sure exactly the intricacies of it. So just give us a little overview. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Voodoo basically just means spirit or deity. And I belong to a New Orleans voodoo type spiritual tradition, even though I live here in Brooklyn. Um, but basically, it's a religion of the ancestors, a religion of honoring your traditions and where you came from. I mean, I think it gets a bad reputation because it's very strong because of the history that it went through, because the people, you know, were enslaved and that's how the tradition grew up. But, you know, it's not all scary and crazy like in the movies. It's very practical. And for us, us, it really involves a lot of sort of cooking and rituals and stuff like that to honor our ancestors and those who have gone before. Well, it sounds like witchcraft, how, how that also has a bad rap. <laughs> you know, and it's, it does. It's really it just does. about nature. It's a nature based religion. They don't believe in the devil. It's, it's, you know, about the threefold, you know, karma. You don't want to harm anyone. So it just, a lot of these things get, get a lot of mystery around it and, and, uh, and uh, fear. Yeah. yeah, definitely, I think. But when if people really look into it, they see that it's something completely different and something that can really be joyful, I think, and respectful and honoring of traditions. Now, how did you get into voodoo? Well, I really wanted something for, you know, we're on the heels of the Women's March. I really wanted something for my daughters when they were little, something positive for them to have about women, about African-American traditions, you know. And so there wasn't anything out there. And, you know, I started out both as a filmmaker and then I did a second undergrad and a second grad degree in anthropology. So I really wanted to find out the history of these religions and how they're practiced today. So that's what my research grew out of. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. So it was brought from Africa to the South. Um, yeah, basically. definitely, yeah. definitely. And then it mixed with some of the indigenous traditions, mm -hmm. depending on where they were and the people that came in. You know, like in New Orleans, there were a lot of Irish people, so it mixed with some of the Irish traditions. You know, in Cuba, it mixed with some, some more of the Spanish traditions mm -hmm. and the indigenous Cuban traditions. Yeah, the Santeria, you know, so. the Santeria of Cuba. Yeah, you, know, you also yes. studied that. Yes, yes. I don't have my higher initiations in Santo or in Lukumi, as they say, but I've been practicing it for, oh gosh, like 15 years now. <laughs> now, Santeria gets kind of a bad rap, too, about uh, bad, you know, bad spells and stuff. It does. I do, it does. And I think because it had to be secret for so many years, you know, not just because it, it deals with things that people don't like to deal with, but because, you know, again, it, nobody wanted to say they were associated with these crazy people. So I think a lot of what makes the news is the more extreme cases that you get out there, you know, whereas, again, most people, their practices are probably pretty normal. Right. Exactly. All right. So let's get into some how, how we can call in some love. So I in your book, you talk about what people should do to get ready for love, because um, when you do some consultations for people, you say that sometimes they want what they want and that might not be good for them. No, no, it's very true. I have a story. I call it the gotta have Pat story. And it was a friend of mine who he just was obsessed with this person. And he went to every person, every practitioner he could find. He lit candles, he built an altar, and they ended up being together. But then they both died of AIDS shortly afterwards, you oh. know, so just it, it to me, it just typifies, wow, you know, you can just be so hung up on someone. And the reality of it could really not be good for you. 
Right. And it, it's painful and, and uh, it doesn't leave us open to the right person coming in when you can see that that's No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I think that, you know, a lot of times when I see clients, you know, they'll want what they want in the beginning and then a month later they're tired of waiting or <laughs> they're looking somewhere else. And to me that really means they are ready for something else and they should be looking elsewhere. So how can they get ready for love? So what's some of the things that you suggest? Well, I start out with a whole bunch of things for self-love. Again, it, you don't have to be a voodoo practitioner or something like that. It's really practical things that people from other traditions would understand. There's a lot of spells in there with crystals. Um, I'm like, I have a piece of rose quartz behind me. <laughs> and I've got a black yeah. tourmaline, which you talk oh. about, black tourmaline being a, a love stone, which I never realized. Well, I think that especially like for what we're talking about right now, we're talking about, you know, how do you get ready for love? And tourmaline is such a wonderful stone because it doesn't only absorb negativity, it transforms it. So it's like you can take that negative and tourmaline will give you back the positive and that will help you with whatever it is in your past that you're trying to get through. You know, I mean, if you're looking for love, chances are you don't have it already. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. You know, what you're coming to the table is probably, you know, some loneliness, maybe some past problems, you know, and you have to really not bring that into your next relationship with you and have that as your mindset when you move forward. So there's so many different things that I put in the book, not just crystals, but herbs and oils and different rituals you can do for yourself to sort of make yourself feel better and be ready for love. Yeah, I've got, I always have a big piece of uh, black tourmaline. I've got black tourmaline all over and then I, I love labradorite. Uh, of course, oh, yeah, isn't that great, the lavender? That's Rose beautiful. quartz is, is awesome to, to bring in love. And um, so when someone comes to you, so let's say, so give us an idea of, of what you do. Is it like, are you kind of like a spiritual love coach? Do, does somebody come to you and you lay out um, some things that they should do? Do you give them a reading first and then you, <laughs> you make up a plan? Because this is so fascinating. <laughs> oh, great. This is great. Nobody ever asked me this. Okay. So <laughs> normally I recommend people get a reading first because, you know, coming to a spiritual practitioner, to me, it's like going to a doctor or a medical person. You know, you need to figure out what really the problem is. You know, I mean, I had a client a long time ago and she really wanted to win the lottery because she couldn't pay the gas bill. <laughs> And I felt really bad for her. And, you know, we did some work and she won the lottery. Not a lot, enough to pay the gas bill, you know, maybe a wow. hundred dollars wow. or something. Eight hundred dollars? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> but then her husband got sick the next day. So it was like her focus, I'm not saying there was a cause and effect, but I think her focus should have been on, oh, is there anything I should do to be protecting my family, not on, oh, I need $100 for the gas bill because she had larger problems. So I'm only using that as an example of people need to get a reading first so they can see what's really going on. You know, they don't necessarily, you know, they could think it's one thing and it's really something else. You know, they could think they have a faithful, kind, loving partner and it could be somebody who's cheating on them or somebody who's moved on, you know, so that needs to be found out and then what they really want also I think they have to get really forefront in their mind they have to know what they want and I usually have them make a list of exactly what it is they want and then we discuss it you know <laughs> and then after the reading you you can they can continue with you to map out a plan yeah, usually it's a candle or oils or something like that, you know. But then sometimes it's like really hard stuff, which I'm sure you have to deal with as well. They have to pick up the phone and actually talk to the person. <laughs> They have to leave their house, right? It's <laughs> Yeah, they have to leave their house. They have to leave their comfort zone, you know. So I think that that's, yeah, you're right. You're right. And, so, and But, yes, there's usually a plan. When you give readings, do you use cards? Are you, um, you know, more of a medium? Or what, what, do you throw bones? What do you do? It's, it's a combination of things. Um, I, like I mentioned, I belong to the New Orleans Voodoo Spiritual Temple, and my priest Lou uh, is the priest there. And he came out with the New Orleans Voodoo Tarot, so I use that as my primary deck. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm, I'm actually in a deck for New York City called the Tarot of the Burrows, and I do use that sometimes oh, as well. I'm the high priestess card. Oh, which is really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I also use dowsing rods and a pendulum to get more specific, you know, because sometimes it has to be, oh, will it be most beneficial for this person to take the bath this week or next week or that kind of a thing, you know, whereas I wouldn't use cards for that. I would use a pendulum or Yeah, I love rods. my pendulum. I use the pendulum for healing a lot. I like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it really gives me really great direction. I don't know. Some people, they can't use them, but I really like it. I do. I do. I have a beech wood uh, pendulum. I like the wooden one. I have crystal and amethyst, but somehow I love my wooden pendulum. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, I like that. Kind of different. <laughs> it's different. So, all right, I've written down some questions here because I have, this is so um, interesting. So, uh, also, so getting back to the crystals, um, you know, I have a, I have a uh, crystal uh, in kind of infuser. It's, it's a bottle with a little pod at the bottom and it has some uh, rose quartz and amethyst and clear quartz and, and you can kind of charge it up with Reiki or intention. Um, how do you, which is really cool, you know, you could charge it up with love or self-love and then drink it or, or uh, what do you suggest the best use of crystals are to bring love into your life? Would it be to wear them, to sleep with them, to drink the essence or just however, whatever you feel like doing? I mean, I think everybody's different. You know what I mean? I do like the idea of internalizing them. And there are companies that will make, you know, elixirs and things like that. Or you can infuse it, like you said. I mean, I think a lot, especially for love magic, too, excuse me, putting something under the bed is really great. Because <laughs> if you're sleeping alone or with, if you're sleeping with a partner, if it's under the bed, it's there. You're there in the bed for six to eight hours a night, you know, so that way its energy can work on you. And you might be able to put a larger stone under the bed where you couldn't necessarily carry a larger stone with you all the time. Exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. I like to put those big stones under the bed. Well, you have a, speaking of the bed, uh, you ha there was one... Um, what is that that uh, that ginger that ginger recipe for the Netherlands? You know the <laughs> <laughs> the ginger hot pants spell. The ginger hot pants spell. That was so cool. Tell us about that ginger hot pants. Spell. I love that ginger hot pants spell. Well, I mean, we have something in Voodoo called Ashe, which is sort of like voodoo chi that's what i call it so it's like a universal life force that permeates all things and stuff like that so what the ginger hot pants spell does is by carrying a piece of ginger that's charged up and wrapped up in your pocket you can infuse the energy of ginger which is warming and sort of you know spicy and all of those lovely things you know with the things down below you yeah. know and all you're doing is carrying it in your pocket you know but the energy of the ginger is rubbing off on you so uh, that can just give you a little kick throughout the day <laughs> version of viagra maybe too yeah <laughs> yeah is that ginger in your pocket are you happy to see me <laughs> i put ginger in my green juice every day so that's kind of you know nice no i love ginger it's very cleansing too yes. as well you know so i i use a lot of ginger mm -hmm. yeah. plus it's something again it's a caribbean spice you know mm -hmm. like it's something that comes from a lot of different traditions that i'm part of and turmeric now that's the big thing you know oh it I is use that it a lot. is yeah i use it <laughs> It stains my, sometimes I'll drink, be drinking my juice, I'll have like yellow on my hands and my lips. And <laughs> it stains. All right. So why, speaking of, of foods, why is the kitchen the most important room in the house? Because you have some wonderful recipes in here too. Oh, thank you. I really wanted this to start out as a, a cookbook. You know, that's where it came from. My daughter works for a Michelin starred chef. Um, I love to cook. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just oh. a total crazy foodie. So, you know, I, I think, but also I think just, you know, we were talking about taking elixirs and, and internalizing things. You know, the food, we put food into our body at least three times a day, if not more. And I think that's a really simple yet very powerful way to connect and transform your life. You know, you can include something like basil and parsley for healing or you could use you know i got recipes in there that have rose petals which are very obviously you know something for love you know, we were talking about cleansing things you know and i was talking to a priestess the other day and you know there's a recipe in there for beets <laughs> and now beets on the one hand they are honoring for the ancestors but they're a great detoxer oh. you know what i mean so all the negativity and all the toxins in your body are going to be drawn out by eating those beets so i think that there's really simple ways that we can use this stuff for ourselves and for those that we love and they're very grounding the beets you know grounding. oh definitely I, Def I do put beets in my juice sometimes too yeah that's great and it's the beautiful color red you know, it is. Yeah, it is. Love. You really feel like you're doing something when you juice beets. It's like, oh wow, look at that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is. It's real earthy and beautiful. You know, it's great. I like to mix it with carrot, maybe a little ginger. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, 
also besides cooking just in the house it's great to cleanse because i like uh smudged this room you know i like to do that and get the ready room ready before an interview or um whatever and you talk about clearing out the house um how important is that because let's say you have a argument or something and then somebody new comes in how often should we do that cleansing the house? well you should definitely do it whenever you feel like you should do it right. okay. it's like everything else it's like that moment when you look around your house and you're like wow i need to clean this place right. so if you feel uneasy if you're having trouble sleeping i think all of those are sort of you know clues that you need a cleansing for the house but some people who are doing a lot of work or who might have a lot of people in and out of the house i would do it on a regular basis you know do it on a monday or do it on a sunday make it part of your weekly ritual i think that's really helpful you also talked about something where you could put some crystals outside your uh, uh, door, on e either side of your door? Yeah, that was part of the black tourmaline spell, oh, that yeah. you could use the tourmaline in that way as a cleansing. Um, I had a friend who used to leave a, a cat box full of salt outside her door oh. <laughs> and make people stand in it before they came in the Oh, house. wow, they had to stand in it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was like an extra little step before the doormat. You had to go into this cat Imagine box full of salt. Imagine your date shows up at the door, you know, your first date, and he's like, you're like, stand in the salt before you can. <laughs> but no, I don't think you need a cat box. She's an extreme person. Right, right. Oh. But you know, there's salt protection you can do. We also use red brick dust and things like that for protection. But I think that's good, you know, especially if you're entering into a new relationship, you want to feel safe and protected and you want the energy in your house to be as, as good as possible. Red brick dust. I haven't heard of that. Oh, it's literally just red brick dust. You can buy it online and things like that. Or you can, I have a friend that makes his own, like, you know, you get really old bricks, yeah. you know, from somewhere that might have significance, you know, obviously a church or something if you wanted it for love or an old bank or something like that if you wanted money. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. And how do you, yeah. what do you do with it? Do you put, do you, you just crush it? Like then, you can take a file to it and it'll disintegrate. Like, like if it's you, old enough, it'll just start falling apart. But then when yeah. you have the dust, what do you do with it? Do you put it, burn it in a candle? Do you put, put, no, no, you put a line like on your threshold. Oh, just put okay. A line okay. of the dust. The yeah. same way you would put a line of salt. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm thinking of other little things you could do. Maybe you could sprinkle it in a candle spell or sure. or something. Now, all of these spells you've got, do, can people make up their own spells? I mean, how, as far as, you know, I always think about that because I'm like, oh, I'd like a spell for this or that. And is do you think it would have the same power if you created your own? I think it does. I mean, I think someone would have to be guided by divination again. You know, usually when I work with a client, that's another reason I use the pendulum and things like that. It's like, oh, okay, well, here's the traditional spell for what I would want to do, but maybe I want to add lavender or maybe I want to add a piece of amber because those are things that really resonate with me or I think might resonate with the client. But I would still do divination just to check, just because I think that that's better than just going on intuition and making it up. It's like when you cook something in the kitchen. If you're not really used to cooking, <laughs> then you got to really test it out and check and maybe ask somebody else if it tastes okay, you know, but if you've done it for a long time and you want to just add something else, you know, you know what might be good and what might be really horrible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, so what I keep hearing this lately and I'm not sh so Florida water, Florida, yeah. tell us what Florida water is. Okay, Florida water, it's not water from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I, kept people I was saying, thinking, do I have Florida? to order that from Florida? Is that water from Florida? From one no, of those it's swamps? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cologne. It's a specific kind of cologne that's been made by one major company since 1811. Um, my old Sicilian grandmother used to use it. Peruvian shamans use it. Um, you can get it almost anywhere if you can't find it. Just They have it in like my local pharmacy, like in the beauty section. So anywhere there's a large you know, Latin population, you'll probably see it. But it's like nine different bergamot is in there and lavender is in there and a bunch of other florals. But it's a secret formula. It's like, you know, all perfumes and Oh, right. It's a secret formula. So, the, and the question is, can you make it yourself? I have made it myself and know people who have made it themselves, but it doesn't work as strong spiritually. That's been my experience. So initially, it's it's a cologne that people wear. Yeah. Now it's used as a as a spiritual cleanser for the home or for the body. Yes. 
kind of yes, like, yes, yes. like um, uh, Palo Santo water. I love using that. The, the yes. spray. Um, it's excellent. The smell I love Palo Santo. Yeah, Palo Santo <laughs> is, is great. You guys, if you don't know what that is, it comes from a tree. It's a stick and you burn it like sage and uh, very cleansing. Um, really great. And then you talk about sacred geometry, which is really fascinating to me because I'm still not, you know, I, I, it's those beautiful like spirographs or something like when we were a kid, right? And how can, <laughs> it, you say it incorporates the magic of both the earth and the stars. And how can we use sacred geometry to uh, call in love? Well, I think, again, like we were talking about the bed, you can use that with your bed. You can set a grid up there with crystals, mm -hmm. with, you know, sacred waters and stuff like that, and use that to charge up your bed and the space for blessings of the love that you want, you know. I mean, maybe you want to have a night of passion, so you could charge it up with a bunch of, you know, musk and patchouli and other spells like that that are very lusty and passionate and crystals that would also be good under those circumstances and then you could do that in the corners of your bed you could do it you know like you would do a medicine wheel you could put those you know lay that down on top of your bed and then spread out the crystals and the oils that way you know this also encompasses feng shui you can put certain crystals and and things in that power corner for love and revitalize yourself so there's a lot of ways to get the job done you know i really wanted to include a whole cross-cultural section of ways that people could bring these things into their life because i don't want people to just be stuck doing oh well i you know <laughs> i always do things this way or i feel more comfortable doing things this way so i wanted them to have options yeah you have so many cool things and I, I really love candle magic and you've got one magnetic attraction candle in hoodoo okay so what's we've talked about voodoo what's hoodoo <laughs> hoodoo is more of a folk magic tradition it's less formalized than voodoo voodoo is very centered on initiations and lineage and proper tributes in the house, whereas hoodoo is more of a kind of practical folk magic. Mm. Some people might call it like hedge witchery or something like that, but it's much less formalized. It's mm. more passed down immediately, if that makes sense. Instead of, you know, I met a woman the other day who's a voodoo priestess whose lineage goes back 300 years, whereas most hoodoo practitioners, it's one person or the one person before them. So it's only one or two generations as opposed to hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's less formalized. It's more like, oh, okay, well, if you want somebody to have a boy baby, then you rub vinegar down below. Something like that. <laughs> Some quick quick fixes there quick fixes yes 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 i like that you yeah know. i've seen i see that now we're at the hoodoo the little little oils that you can buy and little magic spells and stuff that like online there's some some great sites with some hoodoo yeah stuff yes that you can get yeah it's a Which lot of hoodoo stuff very magical there. it's just like the it's i guess everything's pretty closely related you know mm -hmm. um all of this stuff and so i love so you say a uh, lodestone is frequently used to attract uh, things to you. It's a natural magnet that will help you bring your desires and some of the most lusty delights that you can imagine. <laughs> so you've got a great lodestone. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many stones. You've got uh, the Aphrodite oil and you use carnelian and cedar wood. So I think you've, you've got to kind of go through this and because and some of the stuff people might have, you might not have any of it. And so you sure. gotta decide, you know, decide what kind of, and then the wedding broom spell. Um, yeah, that jumping the broom. There was even a movie called Jumping the Broom. So that, that's very cool. Yeah, well, I had to include the traditional, you know, jumping the broom spell right. because that's what people associate with love and marriage and, you know, bringing a new life. Now, do you have anything in here for get, kind of getting rid of uh, somebody? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of spells for what, what do I call it? The mad, bad, and dangerous to know section. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's definitely. And I think the first thing people need to do, if that's what they're really looking for, is get rid of the stuff. You know, and <laughs> I think people hold on to things, you know, because they want to remember and they want to be connected. And I think that that can be really 
it can hold you back under certain circumstances, you know. So there's one spell in there which I think works more on a, you know, mental and emotional level where you get two dolls, there's a Barbie doll spell, and you move them further and further apart as you separate from your person. So it's like you can process the fact that you're not together anymore and you're moving away from them, and then you can be ready to move on. Oh, that's awesome. And then it's kind of like cord cutting, you know, you cut the cord, yes. you know, they call in the angels and cut those cords because we're energetically attached to people even after we've broken up. And it's hard. Yeah, we are. See, I, as a matchmaker, I get feedback after the dates. And it's so interesting because so often the p people will ask the other one, oh, well, what, what happened? You, you, you're divorced. Why did you get a divorce? Or who? tell me about your ex. I don't know why they ask these things on the first date. So they'll go on and on about their ex. <sighs> and and uh, when you're on a first date, you want to give your attention to that person. And they'll think you're not ready to move on. So I think it's, it's so many people are still talking about, he, he done me wrong, you know, how. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. So I think that that's, and it's hard. So that this is designed to just pe have people process that, you know, on another level. Do you have any last tips for love for Valentine's Day for people? Uh, love yourself. <laughs> yes, yeah, self-love. That's right. If you can't, sounds so cliche, right? But if we can't love ourselves, how can we love someone else? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and even if you are with someone, love yourself. You know what I mean? Make choices that are going to be loving to yourself and also loving to your partner. You know, I think that that's how we can all grow. Yeah, I know that a lot of, you know, as a matchmaker, people will come to me with their list and you'll say, make a list, you know, of the things that you want. Well, if you haven't done work on yourself or love yourself, then how are you going to get that list of that fabulous man or woman that has all these amazing qualities that you're not working on yourself, I think. So I think yeah. this I think this book Love Magic will get you ready get you ready for love. Le leave your comments you guys and let me know what you guys do um to get ready for love, what you need to work through and Lilith, thank you so much and all of her her links are below so you can connect with Lilith and the link to the wonderful book and I appreciate you coming by and giving all your wonderful love magic tips. Oh, thank you so much. This was great. <laughs> Love to everybody. Yeah.